Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bermekian Podcast, an episodic review series where I can review anything but not everything that includes giant monster movies, anime, and video games. This week is Ebra, Horror of the Buffet, I mean Deep. Around this time, King Kong was still being used by Toho since RKO gave them the rights to do so, and they already had plans to bring the monkey back into cinema in 1966, one year before the deal would expire. The reason why Toho wanted to make another movie about the giant monkey is beyond me. Anyway, Rankin Bass Animation Entertainment, who in the same year debuted the animated King Kong show, to which I've seen bits of it and it was absolutely shit, have partnered with Toho to create a Kong film, Kong film excuse me, called Operation Robinson Caruso? Caruso, yeah, King Kong vs. Ebra. Even director Jun Fukuda was attached to the movie. But like any Roblox, they hit a major one. Rankin Bass was very upset at the fact that Toho was set on having Fukuda as the director, Sanamasa Arakawa, Eiji Tsuburaya's protege, since he himself was working on Ultraman in his own company, as the special effects director, and Masaru Sato, remember him, as the composer, while at the same time, Rankin Bass wanted Ishiro Honda and Tsuburaya as the creative team. Needless to say, there were a lot of disagreements. So much so that Rankin Bass ultimately dropped out of the project, and apparently so did Kong, because Toho actually liked the script so much that the monkey was replaced by Godzilla. Oh Christ. That means that even though Godzilla can still act like himself, he was going to have traits of Kong. Once again, oh Christ. Jun Fukuda and Teriyoshi Nakano, strangely enough, didn't know that the script was originally meant for Kong, with the former stating, Godzilla was in the first draft of the script that I saw. I don't know what the earlier drafts were like, Making the film was like pouring two cups of water into one. I had to cut one sequence after another. What he meant by that is anyone's guess. At last, Ebra, Horror of the Deep, or going by his Japanese title, Godzilla, Ebra, Mothra, Big Duel in the South Seas, a mouthful of a name that is, was released in Japan on December 17, 1966. And here is that plot synopsis, according to Google. Searching for his brother, Ryota stows away on a boat belonging to a criminal alongside two other teenagers. That seems like a good idea. The group shipwrecks on Lechi Island, Lechi Island? Lechi Island, and discovers the infant island natives have been enslaved by a terrorist organization, the Red Bamboo, controlling a crustacean monster named Ebra. Finding a sleeping Godzilla, or they just found Godzilla completely drunk, sleeping in a goddamn cave somewhere, they decided to wake him up to defeat the terrorists and liberate the natives. Again, that seems like a massively fucking good idea. After this two minute break, because I need to put the Ebra special on the menu, I'll give you my thoughts. See you then.
You know when a movie is not good when even Jun Fukuda didn't have the greatest fond memories of this, when him actually saying, Toho sent me a copy of the VHS tape edition of Ebera Horror of the Deep when it was released. It was like opening an old wound. I didn't watch the tape. And you know what? I agree. It's not the worst, but it's one of the worst. Mind you, not everything in this is terrible, but then again, that's not saying much. Replacing Kong with Godzilla was beyond a stupid idea. It was a mistake. They should have just not made it at all. The story as well has a lot of inconsistencies. Godzilla was awakened by Zeus's lightning bolts, yet in the same movie, he can't pass an electric wire? What? The idea of the red bamboo is actually an interesting one, and I wish it was brought back and made more modernized. Hell, I mentioned the red bamboo as a military slash dictatorship at the end of my second YouTube novel. Sorry for the minor spoiler. But here, I thought the concept here was completely wasted, and to be honest, they're not all that threatening. The characters are completely lackluster at best. To me, they come off as more annoying than relatable. Godzilla, I already touched upon, is not his usual self. Being interested in a single ant? Not needed. Ebra, see, here's the thing. In Japanese, the word ebi means shrimp. So basically, I'm watching something that should be served on an as an entree, excuse me, at a restaurant. I would know because I actually work in a restaurant and I hate seafood. And Martha feels like she was shoehorned in at the last second. It's like she was enjoying a nice vacation, then she got the call from Toho. That's how it feels like. The effects? Well, <clears throat> Sanamasa Arakawa has a long way to go. And you want to know what the damning thing about it is? He wasn't credited in the opening credits. Now that's just dickish. The music by Masano Sato, he's gotten better, Benedict Reigns again. I like the jungle aesthetic, it makes him stand out. Though, the one track that sticks out to me is when the characters find Godzilla in a hangover in a cave for the first time. In the end, Ebora Hall of the Deep is, again, not the worst, but one of the worst. If you say that it is, then I'm not going to argue. If it was a film featuring Kong, it probably would have been better or worse, but as it stands, I think you'd be better off skimping this one. You won't be missing anything by doing so. And already I'm heading back to Gamera. I hear that he's actually in the vampire hunting business. He's doing great numbers. Until then, thank you all for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you want to see more of the Bermakian podcast, then subscribe to the channel and tell your friends about me. Your support makes a difference. This has been Demetrius signing off, and I need to find a stake in a Christian cross. Oh, and hail to the king.